Now, London Mayor Sadiq Khan has splurged millions of pounds to deal with the biggest problem facing this country's capital. Is it soaring violent crime, anti-Semitic mobs roaming the streets, or an insane lack of housing that's led to people renting out tents in living rooms? No, Sadiq Khan has spent £6.3 million of taxpayers' money to give some trendy names to train lines. Transport for London paid swanky branding agency DNCO six figures to conduct creative community engagement with underrepresented groups to explore decolonisation and queer histories over five months of naming research. The agency website says, we started by riding the entire network, getting a sense of the line personalities and the communities they serve. It also gave us the chance to conduct over 150 customer intercepts, hearing from everyday Londoners about what makes the overground special. We quickly learned about the network's low cognitive load Its lighter, cooler, quieter journeys mean that the overground is often preferred by vulnerable groups and those with neurodivergent needs. We also had the privilege of interviewing leading historians, academics and transport specialists delving into topics such as LGBTQ plus histories, East End migration and the fascinating world of London slang and linguistics. London slang! I think they're telling porky pies, because after all that jack and dannying around, the names they came up with are Pony and Trap, and there's no hint of indigenous Cockney culture. They came up with names like the Lioness Line, the Windrush Line, the Mild May Line, and the Suffragette Line, which celebrate women's football, women's rights, an AIDS hospital, and the boat that brought people from the Caribbean to the UK. And hilariously, the names they chose aren't as woke as Sadiq hopes. Lots of suffragettes, such as Mary Richardson, moved on to support the British Union of Fascists. The Lioness line is a gendered word, which is due to be retired soon, like the word actress. Many of the Windrush generation were wrongly deported by our hopeless government, who let acid attackers stay in the country and instead deport hard-working Caribbean people who fully integrated with British society. £6.3 million well spent, Sadiq. Well done. A consultee said, More than just tracks and stations, the Mild May line symbolises a journey of acceptance, love and belonging, a vibrant thread connecting our collective past, present and future. Listen, mate, the Mild May line is just a train that takes you from one crappy part of London that smells of weed to another crappy part of London that smells of weed. Train lines should just tell you where the train goes. The Bakerloo line goes between Baker Street and Waterloo. The Hammersmith and City line goes between, can you guess, Hammersmith and the city. The Victoria line, where do you think that goes? That's right, Victoria. How's anyone supposed to know where they're going to get to when they get on Sadiq's Tampax line or the Wakanda Forever line? They should have let the public decide these names. For no money whatsoever, we could have had better names like Tubey McTubeface. In fact, I came up with better names on the train in this afternoon. We could have a missing acid attacker line. Will he pop up at one of the stations and spray chemicals in your face? Who knows? It's all part of the fun of living in Sadiq Khan's London. We could have a Hamas chief given a council house line in celebration of taxpayers' money spent by Labour councils to subsidise international terrorism. We could have the state overreach line, where police will arrest you for silently praying in your seat or putting a poster on your door. We could have a Mizzy line, where you get threatened with violence while being filmed for TikTok by some kid who doesn't know who his dad is. We could also have a blatant anti-Semitism line, ran with uninformed woke people and Islamists chanting for the extermination of Jews without any repercussions from Sadiq's police force. The Guardian has come out to defend the new names, saying that £6.3 million is nothing. Nothing! Socialists are always very generous when they're spending other other people's money, aren't they? £6.3 million might be an acceptable amount to spend on something useful like kidney dialysis machines, but it's a hell of a lot of money to spend on pointless virtue signalling, especially when London's transport system has a half billion pound shortfall. For all the talk of underrepresented groups, these seem to be the only groups allowed any representation. If Sadiq really wanted to elevate marginalised groups, he'd have a gammon line, and it would take you to a better place than his London.